give it another minute or two before we start. Give some people some time to sign on. Hi, Pamela. Can you hear us? Okay, maybe one more minute. I know Pamela's getting it set up over there. <clears throat> okay, I think for the interest of time, we should get started. If you're ready, Adam. Ready. Okay, ready. great. How are you guys doing? Good. Great. Well, Adam, I'll let you introduce yourself. And I know uh, today we're talking about long term care insurance and I just I know I'm sure Adam will say this but I just want to make sure you know it's clear that everybody's policy is going to be unique um, and different and so of course Adam won't be able to kind of say anything specifically about your personal policy but hopefully this will just be kind of an overview of um, long-term care insurance and some guidance about, in general, how to use your plan, what questions you should be asking about your plan, and just some general information. So I'll let um, Adam take over. And I know today will just be more of a conversation. Um, and so there'll be lots of op opportunity for everyone to ask questions um, and to get some advice. So go well, ahead, Adam. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, yeah, I figure today we'll go over some basics of just um, basics of, you know, policies, um, things to look for, research to do on your own, just to make sure that you do understand what uh, you have and be able to kind of either leaf through the policy if you still have it or, or know how to get a hold of people um, to get you the answers that you need. Um, and then again, go over some, you know, kind of some definitions and some terms that might ring a bell or might not, but something to kind of put in the back of your mind. And then at the end, we can, I'll take any questions. Again, I can't answer specifics. I can talk in generalities. I don't know, you know, individual specifics of your policies and things like that, but um, I can, you know, I can try to answer those questions or at least point you in the right direction to someone that might be able to get you answers um, in that regard. So um let's we'll start with can, some generalities um in terms of what is long-term care insurance and you know depending on the policies that you have um where you can look to kind of find you know some of the key things that are important to know um the first is you know always comes into play is 
you know, how do I even start a claim when, you know, when do I need to know or how do I know if it's time to start a claim? Uh, a lot of that will depend on the policy that you have. Some policies will provide uh, home health care um, as well as in facility, nursing home, assisted living care. Um, you'll have to check. Uh, there has been a, a bigger push um, in the last couple of years for making sure that home health care is included in those policies. Some of the earlier ones, um, depending on how long ago you got your policy, you will have to can check out some of the fine print as to where exactly um, the, you know, where exactly the care can be given if there are restrictions in that, in that regard. But that's usually the, the first and, and foremost, the most important thing is, okay, when do I need to make that phone call? You know, do I qualify now? Um, and oftentimes there will be hotlines provided either by the insurance company or, um, you know, some other agencies that can help you through that process. Uh, it never helps to ask, or ex excuse me, it never hurts to ask, hey, this is what's going on. You know, is it time for me to start a claim? The worst they can say is, nope, not yet. You know, check back later. Um, and so that that's usually the first thing that, that would always come up in terms of just knowing what you need to, you know, in what state that do you need to be, not location, but, you know, what what ailments or what other things would actually qualify me for having that phone call with them and saying, hey, I want to start a claim. Uh, the next piece after that would be understanding what your elimination period is. Um, your elimination period is like a a time deductible of, you know, it's amount of time that you need to wait until they will start um, reimbursing you or paying you for certain services. Um, again, each policy is a little different. Um, they used to, we were able to change what that time was and the premium would change accordingly. Now, most everyone, the standard is around 90 days. Um, Again, definitions are important when it comes to that because some will use calendar days and some will use service days. So they'll wait, you have to get service for 90 days before they will start reimbursing you. Some other ones, um, policies will say, okay, once you need help, we'll, we only have to wait 90 calendar days. But again, something that is very important, um, the devils in the details and things like that of just understanding um, but usually once you call them and say, hey, I would like to file a claim, uh, they will help you with things like that in terms of telling you when, you know, when can you start sending in the bills or, or things like that. So um, those, those would be the two, you know, the, the two first two pieces of the of the puzzle that usually are, you know, what gets you started along your way, then it's kind of understanding, okay, what services are included, you know, what is the process look like of getting reimbursements for um, the care that I'm getting? Is it going to qualify? Um, some of the companies have now have concierge services within the company where there will be people that will help you do that along the way. Um, unfortunately, not all of the companies have that, um, but there are other um, agencies and things like that that can help you kind of walk you through that as to what bills can you send in, um, what can you expect to get the reimbursements for, you know, how much benefit am I going to get on a monthly basis? Um, and usually that's how how it is set up. It's a dollar amount that you will get reimbursed um, for bills that you're spending. Um, usually it's uh, the policies are for a specific amount of time or um, and a specific amount of money, either per day or per month. So again, another devil in the details piece that would be important to to make sure that you make note of, right? You know, on the front of the policy, just so it's easy for you to understand. So I'll pause there quick to you know if there's questions specifically on that those pieces. Okay, perfect. So just give a little, you know, a little story. So say, you know, 
say you have a policy and you know Mrs. Smith has a policy and she's um, not sure if she needs care or not, um, but she's you know needing help with a couple of the things. Uh, the federal definition is um, two of the six acti activities of daily living or um, severe cognitive impairment. Um, and that usually needs to be certified by a licensed medical medical professional. Um, so depending on the doctor or the medical professional, some of them will be better versed in that than others. Um, but you can always talk to them and say, hey, I have this. Can I... You know, is it worth filing a claim? So she goes to the doctor and says, "Okay, um, you know, I need help with transferring and with, um, you know, toileting or something like that." And so, doctor says, "Yeah, sure. Let's, you know, let's write a <clears throat> write a note, um, write a message to, you know, whatever the insurance company is, um, saying yes, we would like to open a claim. Uh, the insurance company usually will need some." form of verification and then she lets her know, okay, hey, your claim has started now, but you must wait 90 calendar days um, in that time if you need help with someone coming to the home or someone, you know, helping around the house, uh, you're going to have to incur that cost on your own. But after the 90 calendar days, you can start sending us those bills and we will then send you a reimbursement check. Um, sometimes it's check, sometimes it's direct deposit. It doesn't you know, again, each company has their own kind of flavor that they like to use, but um, that would be you know, generally how the claims process would start. And then you know, Mrs. Smith can continue to file those claims until her policy, um, if it's a, a finite benefit uh, period or a finite benefit amount until that, that benefit runs out. Um, there are certain types of policies that our lifetime. Um, they're not as prevalent as they used to be, but um, if you do have, uh, you know, a lifetime benefit, that is um, kudos to you. That's, they are hard to come by these days, but it is, can be invaluable when, when the time comes. So, um, all right, we covered that. Let's talk about, does anybody need any more clarity on the activities of daily living? Have you guys had those conversations before? No. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. It's, um, yeah, so the activities of daily living, that's something that is defined, it should be defined in your policy, um, but it is something where you, know, you can call, you should be able to call the insurance companies and say, hey, this is what's going on. Um, I think it's time for me to start a claim and they can help you through that process. Uh, if for some reason you don't think that, you know, it's accurate, you can always, you know, always ask for a second opinion from another <clears> health <throat> professional or um, sometimes, again, like I said, there are agencies that will help uh, with claims, the claim starting process and will help with the home health care. Um, there's, you know, some big names and some not so big names. Just make sure you're doing your research, ask for references uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, often they will ask for what's called assignment of benefit. So they are actually the ones getting the checks um, in the mail for the services they're providing you. Um, it's a service that they provide. It's meant to streamline the process where they're sending the bills that they're billing you directly to the insurance company. The insurance company then accepts that they... Um, this home health care agency is the one that's providing the benefits and, and there is some oversight with that, but it also, you know, always just, you know, if you're not so sure, you know, ask questions, ask for help. Um, you know, people, like, I know people at Capital Village would be willing to go over stuff like that with you. Um, but yeah, that's, there are home health care agencies available. Um, Elizabeth, do you guys have any dealings with home health care agencies on a regular basis? Yeah, we have a referral list of um, a few agencies that we've worked with closely. Awesome. So if you're considering that, definitely give mm -hmm. us a call. We can. I'm on Perfect. Um, and yeah, a lot of times too, that's some of those home health agencies. Um, will... 
they will assist in the claims starting process and they often will also have contacts at the insurance companies and know you know that what that each individual process mm -hmm. company looks mm -hmm. like so um but yes definitely talk to the people at capital village you know they mm -hmm. they would be able to help with experiences and again references of um hey we like these people because of this hey there's been changes with this home health care agency hey this one you know that's the anecdotal and the 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 firsthand um experience that capital village can provide i think is would be you know paramount to helping pick which one might be you know the best fit so um trying to think other terms elimination period we talked about activities of daily living um cognitive impairment the only other piece of the puzzle that i would recommend is to making sure that you've had conversations with or use whatever resources you have available for um, making sure that your you know, estate um, is in order. You've got a, you know, a will, um, medical directives, especially, uh, you know, durable power of attorneys, which is, you know, if um, <clears throat> assigning someone that you trust to help with making those types of decisions, um, you know, again, the future is the future and we don't always know what it holds, but just making sure that we know what, um, you know, making sure you take that stress off whoever the, those per persons or people or persons that need to make those decisions for you. Um, I know it's always easier if, you know, it's written down and they don't have to guess. And, you know, that's kind of, it, it can be some, some friction for those that have to make the decision. I see Patricia, you have a question. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm not sure um, whether I should be in this okay. meeting. Um, is someone 80 plus years old, too old to sign up for um, long-term care or will it cost too much? Um, there are, there are some options um, mm -hmm. at that stage. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some um, limitations mm -hmm. that are, um, are there, but you know, there, there's always, there's always solutions. Thank goodness. You know, it used to be, there was only one or two flavors of ice cream out there. And now, you know, there okay. are, there are different options for different age ranges and things like that. So no, it's it, usually it's more based on your health and uh, just preferences on, you know, protecting assets and protecting family members and things like that. Thank you. Yep. I'll stick around. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, like to, just to reiterate on the, you know, sometimes people have misconceptions or just can't remember exactly where you are allowed to receive that care. Uh, you, you should be able to find that within the policy, but some common places, you know, there are people, a lot of people like to stay home, mm -hmm. rather stay home and have someone come to them. Um, it's more comfortable. It's, you know, you've got friends and family close by, possibly it just makes it easier. You don't want to move. Um, again, check the, check your policy. They should specify, you know, where those locations are. Um, nursing home is also a place that um, most policies will accept uh, nursing homes and assisted living. Again, you'd have to kind of check to see the fine print on that. Um, and if there's any limitations um, as to location or time frame or anything like that, but um, the they are they have become more um, inclusive when it comes to you know locations of where where they will reimburse. Um, the other thing too is to mm -hmm. check to see what they will allow in terms of um, who comes to provide those services. Um, most of the time it has to be a licensed professional, a licensed healthcare professional. So unfortunately you can't reimburse your, um, you know, a next door neighbor or something like that. But there are some instances where you can, there are some policies that do allow you know, neighbors or, um, you know, you could have a neighbor take a short 
you know, night class for a couple hours and be certified. Um, and then they will actually use that as a, re you can use that as a qualified healthcare professional. But again, like I said, the devil's in the, going to be in the details of the policy. Uh, but definitely try to see if those benefits are available just so you know who, you know, who can provide the service, not only when and where you can get it, but also, you know, if there's any other stipulations as to who else would be able to help you um, in those in those situations um, that you might not have thought of originally, but uh, it could be possible just because it's you know in the policy. Um, we have another question. Yes, ma'am. Sir, is GT Independent considered a long-term care agency? GT Independent? Um, Any of the other ones that provide CNAs? Like ideal and other people that are uh, CNAs out there. People who need long term care. They consider long term care agencies. I'm trying to make the link between agencies and. Uh... Yep, no, that's, that's a good question. So the GT Independent, I don't know that name specifically. Um... They are contract with Medicaid. Okay. So, and with Medicaid, they you can get long term care. Correct. Um, in your home. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Just want to give a little time. Yeah. Yes. So, if they have an independent contract, then they are the ones that are going to be helping in those situations. So, um, and they, yeah, through Medicaid, you do get um, some of those services provided. Um, uh, you would have to ask specifically for what those are and what that looks like from them. Um, I have just a general buyer's guide, but it's not specifically for that. Maybe, you know, Elizabeth, you and I can get together and try to figure out if we can find a, a better definitions as to what is covered in those situations. But, um, but no, that's a good question. So Medicaid can, can be considered a long-term care provider based on the benefits that you that you get, the coverage that they provide. Because from my understanding, they do cover some long-term care hospitalization, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so the, the Medicaid is not, it's not technically long-term care insurance, but they do provide long-term care services. So you're not having to pay long term care insurance, private long term care insurance would be if an individual would go to a specific insurance company, like you would for renters insurance or homeowners insurance and say, hey, this is my health. This is, you know, I want to protect, you know, excessive costs for long term care in the future. Um, I want to take out a policy, they give you a policy and you pay a premium. That would be private long term care insurance. Uh, the services that are provided through Medicaid, um, to the best of my understanding, they do provide some of those services, but you don't need to actually buy a separate policy. You get those services because you're um, either dual, uh, you dual qualify for Medicare and Medicaid, or just because you have qualified for Medicaid. Okay. Does that, does that, you don't have to go out and buy and get it, you know, to, in order to get the long-term care insurance through Medicaid, you don't need to go out and buy a specific policy or tell someone, Hey, this is, I want to get this, you know, when the time comes and those services are needed, you ask for the cer certain services and then Medicaid, the GT independent is going to be able to tell you, or hopefully we can get some answers on that. Do you, Elizabeth, do you have anything about what they do provide and don't provide? No, I don't, but Alex knows a lot about this because she's been helping with a few members um, deal with this. So maybe we can set something else up and Alex, uh, we can talk more about that, Pamela, kind of to describe that. But it's, yeah, it's my understanding that if you have Medicaid and you need, you get out of the hospital or you're in a situation where it's deemed by the doctor that you really need um long-term care in the home, then you submit that claim or request to GT Independence, like to your Medicaid provider, and they review it 
and kind of determine, okay, how many hours of care are they willing to pay for and provide? So it's still a process, but like what Adam says, that that's kind of part of the Medicaid. Medicaid is, does pay for that if they deem it necessary. And so sometimes mm -hmm. that's where the struggle is, trying to convince them that it's necessary, but it's not like a separate, like what Adam's saying, it's not a separate policy that you need to purchase. Mm -hmm. But you have made it very clear, the outrageous. Most people here uh, will be approaching it through Medicaid and Medicaid, not seeking to purchase the policy. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I don't know how you heard that, Adam, but you did. I yeah. got it. Okay. I got it. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, for those for those yeah, for those of you at the tower, it's this is not something that you need to purchase or anything like that. It's just a service that Medicaid provides. And so it's for more of that that's maybe Alec can get on and explain exactly, you know, either what the process looks like or what you can expect to be covered, um, you know, what you need to do in order to get to that stage. Uh um but so the some of these some of the terms in terms of where you can get the care, that stuff will still apply. Um, how much they're willing to pay for, that will still apply to you. Um, the activities of daily living is a federal definition, so that's going to be pretty standard across the board as well. Um, and then I know for the Medicaid, for the long-term care through Medicaid, oftentimes, but not always, uh, it does have to come after a hospital stay. Um, you know, the skilled nursing things and the, and the whatever, there are some facets to that, but I think Alec might have a little bit better, um, she'll have a better idea of exactly what that looks like, um, specifically for that program, because it's, again, for the Medicaid programs, it's different for every state, so, or. Yeah, local. so, Pamela, let's talk, and we can talk with Alex and see about setting up a different call just at the towers about this specifically. Okay. 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 Cool. All right. So I think. Oh, the the only other thing I wanted to touch on too, it was kind of in the same lines as, you know, making sure that your, uh, you know, you're using the resources for your wills, the power of attorneys, um, your medical directive things. So. Oh, yeah. you know, if, if someone needs to make a decision no, for you. Know, Elizabeth, can you request them to go on mute? Yeah, I'm just going to mute them. Yep. Okay. All right. Got it. Oops. Wrong person. Oh, no. Done. There you go. Um, lost my train of thought. Um, oh, for the medical directives and things. So it is medical directive um, and things like that are are geared towards letting the people that you trust that are going to make decisions for you know what your wishes are. Um, along those same lines, sometimes it's also good to let them know that you do have a long-term care insurance policy because then they can I, I've often gotten calls from clients or children of clients or loved ones of clients saying, hey, do we have something, you know, do we have long-term care? Did so-and-so, did Mrs. Smith have long-term care? Did, you know, did, did Mr. Jones have, you know, long-term care? Because they didn't know. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but it is often important to share that with, with those, you know, key decision makers, key loved ones. And that could do with long-term care insurance, that could do with, you know, even just, hey, how do I wanna be taken care of in this season of life if something happens and I can't make my own decisions? It takes a lot of the stress off of those making the decisions, you know, instead of guessing or infighting as to, well, I think they would've wanted this, or I think, you know, mom would've wanted this, or dad would've wanted this, you know, you can take those 
those burdens off just by writing it down or, you know, having somebody or having a meeting with them or getting them on the phone and saying, Hey, just in case something happens, because again, like you said, it's hopefully we never need it, but if the time does come and, and, and it does, it, it does take a lot of that burden off um, those ones making the decisions for you when all they got to do is pick up a piece of paper or, you know, say, Hey, yeah, I remember. So, you know, mom told me that she wanted this, you know, dad wanted, you know, dad wanted us to do, you know, this. And so um, that, that would kind of be the final piece, piece of the puzzle. Um, just making sure those things are taken care of. And um, yeah, um happy to answer any questions um try to answer specifics if there's you know if i might know the policy but um we'll try to keep it as general as possible just so for everybody's benefit elizabeth do you have any questions that you Sorry. get asked on a regular basis or do you need to get running um i think you covered it already one big question is what do you need to do or how do you quote unquote, like run down the clock of the 90 days? Mm -hmm. um, what do you so, need yeah, to make that's, sure it's in place? Right. So again, it, it's in the details. So sometimes you need to actually file the paperwork with the insurance company in order to start your clock. There are certain insurance companies that if, if it is, uh, you know, you had an accident and you ended up going to the hospital and you were in the hospital for a certain amount of days, they're not expecting you to file that claim while you're still in the hospital. So they will kind of backtrack on that point. But you will need to ask those questions to the insurance company specifically and specifically with your policy number. Um, Insurance companies do make changes to their policies. Sometimes the fine print can change as to how that stuff works. So um, you would look under elimination period. You would want to look up how many days it is, which is, you know, running down the clock. And then are those days calendar days? Are they service days? Is it day from when the incident happened? Um, things like that. So some of that stuff will be in the policy. Other times you can just call the insurance carrier and say, hey, what is your current policy on this? You know, how, do, how does this work um, with you guys specifically? And so, but no, that's a very important, you know, how do I get this started? That's a, you know, the first piece of the puzzle for sure. And I think you, I'm sure you stated this, sorry, I've been kind of in and out. But it's also to be clear, you know, it's my understanding too that you have to pay out of pocket for those first 90 days. And there's no like they don't retroactively recover you for yeah. that, or do they? No. So most almost all insurance carriers, yes, the 90 days or whatever the time frame is, you do have to pay out of pocket. There are maybe one or two companies that have specific policies that would reimburse you it would be a good question to ask but nine times out of ten no that's like um that would be like your deductible except they use time instead of money so it's you know the first 90 days if you have someone coming into the house or, or something like that you would be responsible for that but then after that and part of the reason they do that is because they do want it to be long-term care they want it to last you know that it, if it's just Hey, I got a, you know, I got a, an outpatient, quick outpatient surgery, and I just need help for two or three days, but then it's going to be over and I'm going to be fine. They don't want to go through the, that's not what the policies are designed for to start a claims process and all those things. It's more for a, an, excuse me, extended event, um, you know, post-cancer, post-stroke, um, you know, cognitive, you've got, you know, mental, um, mental health things or you know dementia stuff like that that's that's what their idea was when they kind of created this so does anyone else have any questions i see Did patricia put students? one in the patricia put one in the chat yeah. um but that was that's elizabeth that's for you okay and let me read that and then susan has a question but Okay. HV, do you have a list of reputable long-term care insurance companies? No, we don't. It's, to my knowledge, we don't. Well, 
we don't have any information about insurance companies. Maybe that's, maybe Adam has some suggestions of insurance mm -hmm. companies. I'm not sure, or, or where, or where Patricia could look or who she could yeah. ask. Yeah, I can, I can get you a list. Um, uh, I can get you a list of a couple. Um, I'll do a little due diligence ahead of time just to make sure that um, with the age. Yeah, exactly. Specific. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah, that, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. That would okay, be thanks. wonderful. Uh, okay. Oh, and you have my email, so thank you. Yeah, Adam will get to me and I'll, I will make sure it gets to you. And then Susan, go ahead, but you have to unmute yourself because I muted you earlier. Do you know how to do that? Okay, maybe I can ask. If I ask to unmute, did that work? Hey, you got me? Do you there have you go. me? Good. Now, I just wondered if you had an opinion on the long-term care program offered to federal retirees. Of, uh, and I'm a mem I've, I've paid into that system for a long time and fortunately not have, have, I haven't had to use it, but I wondered if you all had any experience or an evaluation of the program, should I yeah. need to use it? <laughs> or they, I they are, the federal program to my understanding is a good, it's a good program. Um, they use, I wanna say it might be John Hancock is the, name of, so. the, yeah. is the name of the company that they yeah. they had contracted with. Um, is it John, do you have the- I. I you know, I know I've read John Tancock in the in the past and I I can't quite remember whether it's still John Hancock. Yep. Um my most yeah, regardless, it is yes, yeah. it is reputable. It is a reputable company. Um again, the devil's gonna be in the details, just understanding, you know, sometimes those policies, it's either you opt in or opt out. So you don't really have many choices in terms of the amount of coverage and, and things like right. that. Um, so just making sure that you understand um, what it will provide, you know, if the time comes that you do need it, um, oh. so you can plan accordingly. But no, that's John Hancock is a, that program from what I've heard, at least, I haven't had any direct experience, but um, it is reputable. Good, that's very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other any other questions, concerns, suggestions, recommendations? <laughs> well, I, this is Susan. I have another question. Sure. I mean, should I, I have a, a wonderful daughter who will, you know, sort of be uh, reading through this for me at mm -hmm. whatever time? But um, are you how how are you set to to uh, help us or, or the, through the village so yeah so i can i can help answer general questions um most of the very specific things you're going to have to contact whoever the agency is, or the not the agency either the the program or okay. the company that you have um, yeah. they will also be able to assist you the third uh, party that would be able to help would be one of the home health care agencies if you deem to go with them um, and a lot of them will assist with the claim starting process they'll help with coordination of care um, they find all that stuff with you and okay. I bet Elizabeth would know better which ones you know provide those yeah. services and which ones you know they would recommend um, I would really lean on the insurance company for definitions of what is included and then the home health care agencies or the other you know agencies to help you with starting claims and stuff like that okay. I, just, I can provide you some general information and if you um you know need help with specific plans or looking at different plans that's um i have an independent uh, insurance practice that's based in the southeast yeah um, good but kind of I grew up in Pennsylvania, lived kind of all over the place, um, <laughs> but then got connected with the Capital Village on some other things. And I knew that these questions kept coming up. So figured we'd do just a general info session and try to help with 
understanding what it is because it can be it can be confusing especially with all the the commercials and things that are out there but uh, oh yeah now so. i feel lucky to have my federal program mm -hmm. i mean i think but uh, uh you know if it needs to be uh implemented then that's when the uh, others will become involved i presume yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's very helpful mm -hmm. Anything else, Elizabeth? You got anything else for me? I don't. I don't. Okay. Yeah. I think if, if if no one has any other questions, you know, we can we can call it for okay. today. But you know, know that if anything comes up, any more questions arise, you can reach out to me and I can touch base with Adam or uh we can see if there's like like the question I think that Mr. Kennedy had that was maybe uh, you know, another person would be better suited to answer that. We can look into that. So if any questions come up after this conversation, don't hesitate to reach out to the village and, and we can see if we can get some of those questions answered. Great. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Adam, thank, thank you. you so, so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, take care, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.